whenever you hear the word health or healthcare, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Is it pandemics, vaccines, or simply just medical treatments? With the world reeling from the COVID-19 crisis, the strength of health systems have come to the fore. Even Singapore, whose healthcare is respected for being one of the most efficient in the world, has quickly fallen from gold standard, tackling a virus, to becoming a cautionary tale, as foreign worker dormitories report chilling statistics of infections. Think about it. Have we ever cared or spared a thought about the health of the poor and the vulnerable even during such an unprecedented crisis like this? We as a society clearly fail when we neglect the health of the poor and vulnerable. Given this common oversight, I hope that all of us can see this intricate link between health and poverty so that we can approach them in a more holistic way. The migrant community in Singapore is constantly facing a great risk of contracting infectious diseases which becomes a problem for the whole society. This year's coronavirus pandemic has highlighted the massive inequality gap present in many countries, including Singapore. Many foreign workers in dormitories have been infected with the virus, with the virus due to their poor and overcrowded living conditions with most of them being locked up in groups of eights. Many of you will think, it's just a couple of weeks, how bad can it be? However, it did not just last a couple of weeks, nor one to two months. Some of them have already been quarantined for up to four to five months. This created a sense of uncertainty and anxiety amongst the migrant community in Singapore. Imagine if it was you that was uncertain when you could see your family again? Or what if it was you who had to live through this same sense of anxiety every single day, not knowing when you will contract the virus? This quarantine has indeed proved harmful for the foreign workers in Singapore as there were many cases of unnatural deaths and self-harm after being stuck in such a constrained environment for long hours every day. Not only did it affect them mentally, but this high number of infections have also affected these workers psychologically. More and more Singaporeans were starting to get wary in the presence of these construction workers. As a Singaporean, it is indeed heartbreaking to see so many people ostracize these workers just because of how high the number of COVID infections there were in the dormitories. There were many instances where I saw parents trying to drag their children away from these workers whenever they saw them on the streets or even at HDB void decks. I vividly, there was, I vividly remember there was one instance where I heard this mother say to a child, hey, got construction worker there, don't better don't, go, better don't go too close. I was really taken aback by this statement and I feel that actions like this are simply too overboard. As one nation, I feel that we could be more tolerant and caring towards the foreign workers and help them to tide over this crisis as one. Apart from the migrant community, the vulnerable communities in Singapore have also been greatly affected by this crisis. In this seemingly rich and wealthy country, with a population of 5.6 million, many would think that poverty and health would not even be a problem here. However, what if I told you that 378,000 people still live in poverty and 4.1% of Singaporeans face food insecurities every single year? China News Asia Singapore's English news channel also reported that the poor would often resort to having snacks as their main cause. Often, these are processed foods such as instant noodles and hash browns, which in the long term increases the risk for heart disease, stroke, and most commonly, obesity. The poor and the vulnerable communities are also the ones who are most likely to get affected as unemployment rates rise. 
as fellow Singaporeans, we should always try our best to lend a helping hand to these people or to those who have been greatly affected by this crisis. Volunteering to sew more face masks or setting up more soup kitchens can be really helpful. Lastly, when was the last time that you ever waved to your neighbour? According to the latest graciousness survey by the Singapore Kindness Movement, only 23% of Singaporeans claim that they wave to their neighbours for at least three times a day, uh, three times a week. Can you believe it? Even such a simple gesture can be so rare in our HD vlogs nowadays. As Hubert Humphrey, America's former vice president once said, the impersonal hand of a government can never replace the helping hand of a neighbour. Therefore, I feel that we should always try our best to communicate with our neighbours, understand their problems and proceed to helping them whenever we can. There have also been times when I was simply shocked and surprised by how much some families can be affected by during this crisis. As a teacher, my mother gets a chance to interact with many students of different backgrounds in school, and I often get the opportunity to listen to her stories. So there's this one where one of the students had his myopia degree increased significantly throughout the circuit breaker period, but he was unable to do anything about it as his family did not have the sufficient amount of money for him to make a new pair of glasses. As his form teacher, she felt that it was her moral obligation to help her students in need as she passed him some money to pay for his glasses. I feel that this is one of the many instances where we can help people around us whenever we can, no matter if they are our neighbours, our friends, or even someone we don't know. As such, we can be more united and help the vulnerable communities in Singapore overcome this crisis as one. Thank you.